Good happy Tuesday evening. I'm Riley King and welcome to this Tuesday evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Tuesday evening, so let's get started and begin right now. First step. Let's take a look at your weather for this evening. And here is a look at your weather. Heat, humidity will be building. With more on that, let's go to meteorologist Kevin Scripper with a full weather forecast. as we go through the next couple of days as Henri continues to shove away an entirely new weather pattern has been moving in. We'll be looking for 80s today and 80s to lower 90s for tomorrow and for Thursday. All of this with a good deal of hazy sunshine and a fairly light wind and that higher humidity that Henri left in place going all the way through Thursday afternoon. We get into Thursday afternoon and there will likely be a passing shower or storm chance and with that chance will be a switch in winds going from the west and southwest to straight out of the north and that will be a huge difference from that heat and humidity that will be in place through thursday knocking that back friday setting up more comfortable conditions and temperatures in the 70s for the weekend right now early peak at the weekend on this tuesday looks to be partial sunshine both days temperatures mainly in the 70s and fairly comfortable conditions until the next system starts to arrive monday with another buildup of warmth and humidity so there's a look at your next seven days. We are looking at the warmth and humidity through Thursday. It's not back Friday. More comfortable conditions for the weekend. Okay, and there you go on that weather forecast from meteorologist Kevin Scrippa. And now let's take a look at your traffic and see what's happening on traffic for this evening. As you can see in Henniker, it is smooth sailing with a little bit of medium pace traffic. Hopkinton, smooth sailing with a tiny spot of medium pace traffic. Bow, Pembroke, and Concord, smooth sailing, but in the Concord area, as you can see, there's some medium and slow pace traffic. Bosquin and Canterbury, smooth sailing. Chichester, smooth sailing with some medium and slow pace traffic. Epsom, smooth sailing with some medium and slow pace traffic. Northwood, Smooth sailing with medium pace traffic and lead. Smooth sailing with some medium and slow pace traffic. In Durham, you got some smooth sailing with some medium pace traffic. Rochester, smooth sailing. Dover, smooth sailing with medium and slow pace traffic. Newington, smooth sailing. And Portsmouth, smooth sailing with some medium and slow pace traffic. Greenland, smooth sailing. Rye, smooth sailing with some medium and slow pace traffic. Northampton, some medium pace traffic with smooth sailing. Hampton, some medium and slow pace traffic with some smooth sailing. And Seabrook, medium and slow pace traffic with a little bit of smooth sailing. On 101, a great ride on 101. Nice and smooth sailing on 101. In the Hooks in Manchester area, smooth sailing with some medium and slow pace traffic. Gopstown, medium pace traffic with a little bit, bit of smooth sailing as well. Bedford, medium pace traffic. Amherst, smooth sailing. And Milford, medium and smooth sailing traffic. Merrimack, smooth sailing with a little bit of medium and slow pace traffic. Nashua, smooth sailing with some medium and slow pace traffic. Nashua, Milford, slow and medium pace traffic with a little bit of smooth sailing. And that is a look at your traffic watch for this evening. And now let's get to your news. 
First step, cyber criminals target Peterborough Finance Department. Let's take a listen to that video from Dipping Me War News 9. It all started on July 26th when Peterborough town officials learned that the Conval School District had not received its $1.2 million monthly transfer from the town. This is done typically via an ACH transfer. Upon further investigation, we found that uh, fraudulent activity had incurred. Town Administrator Nicole McStay says the transfer was changed from Conval's bank to one that was under control of criminals. We immediately called New Hampshire Primex, which is our uh, insurance carrier, um, which is our standard protocol. They immediately got in touch with Adam Group, which is a cybersecurity firm, and the U.S. Secret Service. An investigation was launched to track down the missing money. We discovered, though, pretty quickly that that, that transfer had already gone into um, cryptocurrency, making it very difficult to recover. During that time, investigators discovered even more funds were stolen. Two other uh, transfers that did not go to where they were intended, uh, which was Beck and Bellucci, the general contractor working on the Main Street Bridge Route 202 reconstruction projects. Officials believe the thieves targeted the town's finance department through fraudulent emails disguised to look like they were coming from the school district and the contractors. They were in fact communicating um, with these criminals who uh, really did an incredibly professional forgery, um, making their emails look just like the, they were coming from the entities that they were, we were expecting. And although there is no evidence that this was an inside job, those staff members in the finance department that were targeted in this fraud scam are right now on leave until the Secret Service wraps its investigation. Right now, it's unclear if any of the lost money will be covered by insurance. Live in Peterborough tonight, I'm Tim Callery, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Monday Powerball drawings begin. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. The New Hampshire lottery has recorded more than $100,000 in ticket sales since Sunday, leading up to the first Monday Powerball drawing. They're selling at Bunny Supred in Manchester, the store with the most lottery ticket sales in the state. I think it's exciting. It's, uh, our customers loving it. Powerball has been played in New Hampshire since 1995. In that time, 11 jackpot winners have taken home prizes from 25 million to more than a half billion. Hopefully we'll have the jackpot, new jackpot here. What you need to know if you play, the Powerball odds stay the same. The numbers to choose from stay the same. The prices stay the same. Just an added drawing on Mondays. Monday, Wednesday, Saturday for Powerball now. By adding this third draw, we hope that, you know, the jackpot's going to grow bigger, faster, you know, it's going to really allow players here in New Hampshire to win more prizes. The New Hampshire Lottery says this is a good time to remember to play for entertainment and within your means, saying 25 cents on every dollar goes to education. The net profit from the sale of tickets, of course, is earmarked for education. Uh, last year for Powerball, we did about $31 million in sales. Mega Millions, $26 million in sale. Gene Mackin, WMUR, News Not. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Holloway files new motions that indicate self-defense strategy. Let's take a listen to that video from WME War News 9. Dale Holloway faces several charges, including attempted first-degree murder for the shooting at a Pelham church in October of 2019. Holloway is currently serving seven and a half to 15 years in prison for assaulting the lawyer that was first assigned to his case. In this new motion, Holloway is asking the court to hold a hearing to clarify the status of his standby attorney. Holloway has previously said he would represent himself, but now he writes, the court simply assumes Mr. Holloway wishes to restrict or limit attorney Lee's role in his defense. Holloway writes that effectively forces him to represent himself. 
In the latest batch of motions, there is no mention of the insanity defense that Holloway has previously written he intends to use. But he does refer to self-defense, which in the past he has also claimed he will present as a mitigating factor. He is asking that the court accepts his notion of intent to rely on self-defense at trial and or schedule a hearing. Holloway is also seeking access to records from institutions where he was previously incarcerated or hospitalized, asking the judge to issue five subpoena ducis tecum to produce records. Finally, Holloway has filed a motion for discovery. The motion broad-ranging, seeking information that is favorable to Holloway, including having the state question the witnesses, including law enforcement personnel, for this information. Holloway concludes in an affidavit that he has not received a complete copy of discovery, although a response from the Hillsborough County Attorney's Office says they will provide any missing documents immediately. Now, Holloway's trial was scheduled to begin next month, but it's been postponed, now scheduled to start next February. Ray Brewer, WMUR News Now. To billionaires and corporate interests, buying elections is worth every penny. But Senator Hassan knows you can't put a price on democracy. She voted to end dark money and tackle corruption. So Washington works for us. Thank her. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great evening and see you back here tomorrow for another newscast. Good night and goodbye, everyone.